Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have x cubed plus 1 equals x minus 5 squared. I'll be presenting two methods. And if you look at this equation carefully, you're going to notice that we have a perfect square on the right hand side. And we do have the sum of two cubes on the left hand side. But is that going to help us? Not really. So we're going to have to first go with the first method. So the first method is just going to be expanding everything and then using the cubic formula. And it might, uh, it might be incomplete. Okay. Let's see where this goes. So let's go ahead and expand everything on the right hand side. And then we're going to subtract. 1 minus 25 is negative 24, and this is what we get. Now, when you look at this equation, do you think it's factorable right away? Is there any rational solutions? We can quickly check by looking at the factors of 24. Well, it's not going to be real quick. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time, but you can definitely use what is called rational root theorem. So the rational root theorem says if there's any rational roots, then they have to divide the constant term because this is a monic polynomial, which means the leading coefficient is 1. If the leading coefficient isn't 1, then you have to divide the constant by the, or not the constant, but you have to divide factors of the constant by the leading coefficient, the factors of the leading coefficient, and then look at all possibilities. So that's probably going to give you more options to check. Okay, so that is rational root theorem. Are there any rational roots? I have no idea. I haven't checked it, but you can definitely check. For example, suppose x is equal to 1, right? 1 is a possibility, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, plus minus 8, plus minus 12, and plus minus 24. So there's like 16 positive and negative factors. So that's a lot of numbers to check, right? Don't you think? But of course, if you put it to from alpha, it's going to give you the factors or even give you the solutions if there are any rational solutions. Even if there are irrationals, it should give you the solutions. Anyways, so let's test some values. For example, uh, you hopefully immediately see that one is or one or negative one is not a solution because if you check the sum of the coefficients, it's not zero. Uh, how about 2? Let's test x equals 2. We get 8 minus 4 plus 20 minus 24. I get 8 plus 20, 28, minus 28, and that's equal to 0. Awesome. I didn't even know that 2 would work, but, you know, it just happens to be. Trust me, I didn't check this earlier. Anyway, so x equals 2 is uh, going to work. And obviously, you can check that in the original problem, too, because 2 cubed plus 1 is 9, and 2 minus 5 is is negative 3 and negative 3 squared is 9. Okay, I should have known that, right? But anyways, x equals 2 works, which means we can reduce the degree, right? So we can go ahead and divide this by x minus 2, but I'm going to do it in a factoring way, so kind of like x cubed minus 2x squared plus... So what I do is I try to uh, generate factors of x minus 2. So for example, this is going to be x squared times x minus 2. So I add or subtract whatever term is needed to make x minus 2 a factor for those two terms. Make sense? I hope it does. But I always have to balance with what I have. So for example, I have negative 1x squared. I just wrote negative 2x squared. So I kind of have to add an additional x squared to make it negative 1x squared. Make sense? So I always have to stick to the original. But then this x squared needs to be followed by another term. Of course, that's going to be a minus sign. And you can pretty much uh, say that uh, I'm always going to be able to put a 2 here if there's a 1 uh, because it's going to be doubled. And then the degree is going to drop. So it's just going to be x squared minus 2x. Notice that x squared minus 2x has x minus 2 as a factor. Make sense? But I have 10x, so I have to add 12x. And then finally, when you subtract a 12, it's complete. Make sense? So then we're going to factor this by grouping. If you take a look at each factor, you're going to get x squared times x minus 2, and then x times x minus 2, and finally 12 times x minus 2. And that's equal to 0. And then if you take out x minus 2, we do know that x equals 2 is a solution, but we can focus on the quadratic piece here. 
which gives us the following. Well, this is not going to have real solutions, right? So we need to write those complex solutions. By using the quadratic formula, they are negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac. That's going to be 1 minus 48. That's going to be negative 47. And I can kind of write it as square root of 47i divided by 2. So those are going to be the complex solutions, and x equals 2 is going to be the only real solution for this problem. Okay? So far, so good. All right. So what are we going to do next? So here's what we need to do. We got all the solutions. This is a cubic, so we're done with the first method. <laughs> Nothing else we need to do. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So the second method uses a special uh, manipulation, a special factoring method, which is not always available, obviously. Now, I know some people are going to complain about it, like, hey, this is a contrived problem. Of course, pretty much all competition problems are that way. So, anyways, so here, let me rewrite the original problem, x cubed plus 1 equals x minus 5 squared. And I'm, I'm going to show you a graph at the end. Hopefully, if I don't forget, I think I made a graph, hopefully. Anyways, I, I, I don't remember. I made too many thumbnails and, you know, PDFs in the meantime. So, we said that, okay, right-hand side is a perfect square and left-hand side is a sum of two cubes. And that didn't seem to help us because if you factor x cubed plus 1, you're going to get x plus 1. And that's not one of the factors of x minus 5 squared, right? So, that's not helpful. But we can do a little bit of something to make it work. How we, do we do that? So we can do the following. We can go ahead and subtract something from both sides or add something so that both sides are still factorable and left-hand side tells me, okay, it's, it's either going to be a sum of two cubes or a difference of two cubes, right? It can't be anything else because I'm going to add a constant. And the right-hand side, I don't want to add a positive number because um, sum of two squares is not going to be factorable most probably. Uh, but I want to make it a difference of two squares. So that kind of tells me that I should subtract a perfect square from both sides and making the left-hand side either a sum or a difference of two cubes. Does that make sense? So under those conditions, it's not too difficult to guess that we need to, we need to subtract 9 from both sides. Hopefully you got to see that. If I subtract 9, then I get a difference of two squares on the right-hand side and I do get a difference of two cubes on the left-hand side. So they're both good and factorable. But another challenge we have to overcome is after I factor, are they going to have a common factor? Um, oh, come on. That should work, right? Uh, hopefully. <laughs> okay, let's see. So I'm going to take out an x minus 2 here, right? And then that's going to give me x squared plus 2x plus 4. That's going to be the left-hand side, right? That's from difference of two cubes. And the right-hand side is going to be as follows. This is 3 squared, so I can write it as x minus 5 plus 3 and x minus 5 minus 3. You get the idea? And guess what? This is going to be x minus 2, and we're going to have a common factor. Let's put everything on the same side. Take out x minus 2. We're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 4 minus this, which is x minus 8, by the way. So it's going to be minus x plus 8, and then from here we're going to get x minus 2, and x squared plus x plus 12 as before, and the solutions are going to be the exact same solutions as before. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick, if I made it. Hopefully I did. And yay, I did. Okay, great. So as you can see here, we don't see the complex solutions. We only see the real one, and that is x equals 2. So we have a cubic function intersecting a parabola at a single point. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.